Hello everyone and welcome to prompt number 112. Let's just get into it. We've got, oh, we've got two, ooh, Saturn's rings and birdcage. It's just kind of funny because the last prompt ended in me saying I was going to do more backgrounds and it would be funny if the prompt was space because space isn't really a good background and here we are with something space related. All right, here we go. So first of all, excuse me for not pressing record on that first sketch. Basically, it's just a, what is it? Birdcage with the Saturn rings going around it. So nothing too exciting, just trying to play around with different ideas. And then I started to think about, like I mentioned, I wanted to have a background on this image. So I thought about something. I mean, obviously my ideas are all going to be not actually drawing Saturn in space because I wanted to do a background. So I thought about a witch because witches would have animals probably because, you know, familiars and stuff. So I put a birdcage in the background and had a witch with her pot boiling and coming out of that pot was going to be bubbles and one of those bubbles was going to have the rings of Saturn around it. So basically this is the general idea I was playing around with. I think in general, I just wanted to have a character standing in a place that is hers and you can tell a lot about her personality. And that's what I went with. So like I mentioned, I was more trying to go for the sketch at the bottom of the page where you have everything in view of the image. You have the witch just standing there with her birdcage bird and dang it phone. Please mute your phones while you're recording so you don't mess up. So I wanted everything in view. I think that's kind of my style when it comes to art is I don't like to crop things out. I like everything to be in the image. And that was kind of what I was going for with this one. I wanted to see the full room and you know, her personality and who she is and everything that's in the room. But for some reason, when I started to pencil this, I just kind of drew the pot really big and up close to the viewer. So instead of having this witch standing there in her room full of things, I have it really, you know, close up to the witch with the pot up and the witch is like right there. Anyways, I do like how it came out in the end, so I'm not complaining, but it was just, I don't know how I let that happen. Anyways, so like I said, the pot is right up to the viewer and I thought it would be cute to put like bumper stickers or just like really big stickers on the pot. Kind of like how people put skateboard stickers on their skateboards. I feel like you don't see a lot of that in witch drawings, but I guess it also makes sense because people don't put stickers on their kitchen pots because they're gonna get dirty. But I don't know, she's a witch. Maybe she has a spell that can just immediately clean the stickers off, right? I don't know. Either way, I had originally planned on putting the birdcage in the background, but because I made everything so close up and big, I felt like I was just going to end up squeezing it into the background somewhere. So what I ended up doing for the birdcage is I turned the birdcage into a sticker sort of logo thing that is on the pot. It turned out really simple and I was thinking of different ways that maybe the bird actually does come alive. So it could still be her familiar. Maybe it's like an ink familiar that hops around on the different stickers on the pot or it can jump off and do things. Or maybe it's just like this weird shadowy bean that can just go wherever it wants. That in mind, I did design this sticker to be more of a logo than really pushing the whole it can come off thing. It can still, I'm sure, but I thought it was really fun designing this bird. It's a circle and then I have all of the bird details in there. So that's the bird cage in case you were wondering. And of course, Saturn's ring is still over a bubble. I don't think the bubbles came out the way that I really wanted them to like in the sketch. But I do think it's really fun. I wanted to push some really bright and vivid colors because we are dealing with a witch here. I feel like things need to be as unnatural as possible when it comes to magic and stuff. So I really wanted to make this disgusting, neon, bright, vivid green color. So I basically just used that really light lime green color. What's it called? It's from the Schminke set. It is May Green. And I also mixed in just a little bit of cadmium yellow light just to make it even more brighter. The light green was bright, but once I put the yellow in there, it became so toxic, which I think really worked for this. And I also wanted to play around with, you know, since it's so bright and toxic, I wanted that to be the light source. 
I did mess up the light source so many times. I thought about doing the whole writing down on a sticky note where the light source is and then having arrows so that I could remind myself where the light source was, but because the light source was in the middle of my page, I couldn't just put a sticky note on top of my page, though I guess I probably should have at least just put a little piece of paper down with the sun and arrows coming out everywhere to remind myself. There's just a few places that the shadows just really don't make sense for the light source being the cauldron. Which, by the way, first time saying cauldron, I think I kept forgetting what that word was. I was calling it a pot earlier. So I think the biggest mistake was the plants hanging on the wall. There's like a shadow as if the light source is on the, on the ceiling, but oh well. I'm okay with it. Overall, I really do like this image. It's not the most amazing background ever, but I am proud of myself for not having a lot of white space. Though speaking of white space, I hadn't really planned on just making the bit in the middle 100% black. It does seem a little bit like a waste and I kind of do wish I put a little bit more just like details and stuff in there, but at the same time, I didn't want it to be too cluttered. So I did want the focus to be on her and what she was doing and I felt like if I was going to push too many details and little things in the background background, it just probably would have been too much. So in the end, I ended up coloring it all black and I do think it works because it really does make that green bubble pop off of that black page. Oh, and to go back to the hanging plants, uh, just a really funny, or at least something I thought was a funny detail, is I saw a lot of witches having like dried up things hanging on their walls, and I thought that would be cute to do, but I thought it would be really funny to put a cactus up there. I know that is not something that would be hanging and drying on a line with other sort of herby things, but because cacti are my thing, I just thought it would be so funny to just put a whole potted cacti up there hanging there looking stupid, and that's my joke of the day. Isn't that funny? Ha, ha. point about I am adding all of the green glow, which I found to be a little difficult with watercolor. I know I probably should have put the green down first and then worked some colors around that green. I don't know. I think I'm still trying to figure out how to do stuff like that when it comes to watercolor. I'll learn one day. Clearly I am not going to improve on something that I rarely do. I think it's been a very long time since I've worked with a really, I don't know, what condensed light source, something that is really casting a dark, not dark, casting a really intense light on other things. If you catch my drift, especially if it's not white, it makes it kind of difficult. But yeah, I'll get there one day. Just got to practice on that a little bit. And yeah, I think overall that is our prompt. I've really enjoyed this one, pushing myself to do a more completed illustration with a full background. It is fun. I do kind of miss my little white silhouette things, but you know, you gotta try different things sometimes. Oh, and let me know in the comments, did you see the hatch Easter egg somewhere? There's a hatch hiding. Where could it be? Let me know in the comments if you saw. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the end card. Last week's prompts were bow tie and sunglasses. And our first featured artist is Hugh Days, whose Instagram I absolutely loved. We have a portrait here of someone with sunglasses for earrings and a bow tie. And honestly, I just really enjoyed the style and all of their Instagram drawings. So go check them out. And our other featured artist is Jay Skyte. This entry just really caught my eye because those bright, vivid colors, that pink is, it's very bright, but also it's not obnoxiously bright somehow. I really loved those pink glasses. They are just so much fun. The colors, the colors in this whole image are just, I love it. It just really stood out to me and I really enjoy it. Just look at that guy. Look at his mustache. Look at him. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining in. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>